Welcome to this tank encyclopedia video on German light tanks of the Second World War, Part 2. Feel free to leave a like and subscription, as well as checking out our website for the full written article this video is based on and countless others. Prior to the war, despite numerous attempts to increase tank production of the larger Panzer III and IV, this was not possible due to the limited industry. The Germans were instead forced to use a large number of the weakly armed Panzer I and Panzer IIs. Luckily for them, during the takeover of Czechoslovakia in early 1939, the Germans came into possession of the well-known and developed Skoda and CKD, Cesko Moravska Kolbendanyek factories. With them, the Germans obtained fast stockpiles of tanks, including some 200 LTVZ 35s and more importantly, 150, though not all finished by that time, LTVZ 38s. The LTVZ-35 was renamed to Panzer 35T in German service. It was used to supplement German Panzer divisions at the start of the war. While a generally good design, by 1941 war standards, it was becoming obsolete. Due to relatively small numbers operated and as the Germans were not interested in continuing production, only a few modifications based on the Panzer 35T were ever developed. One of these was a command vehicle which had a large aerial antenna placed above the engine compartment. The second version was an artillery towing vehicle which was built in small numbers. Skoda officials, wanting to gain more production orders from the Germans during 1942, developed a series of armored vehicles. Some of these were T-15 and T-25 tanks and even a self-propelled version based on the Panzer 35T chassis. While the T-15 prototypes were actually built, the remaining projects and versions remained mostly as paper projects or wooden mock-ups. Cekade's, renamed to BMM by the Germans LTVZ-38, proved to be a more promising design, with good protection and firepower for the standards of the early stages of the war. More importantly, the chassis of this vehicle proved to be highly reliable and adaptable. The LTVZ-38, known in German service as the Panzer 38T, would prove to be a great asset for the German Panzer divisions during the first few years of the war. During the production run from 1939 to 1942, the overall design of the vehicle remained the same with only slight modifications, such as the increased frontal armor from 25mm to 50mm. In the role of frontline tank, the Panzer 38T would remain in use until the end of 1941. While its usage did not end there and a number of them would remain in use for longer, its armament by that time was clearly outdated. The Panzer 38T chassis, on the other hand, would be reused for a number of different modifications up to the war's end. One of the most common vehicles based on the Panzer 38T was the Martyr 3 series. Its overall design was mostly just copied from the previous Martyr 2 series, having a weakly protected superstructure and an anti-tank gun placed in it. These include the Panzer Jager 38T for 7.62cm Pak 36 and 7.5cm Pak 40-3 of Panzerkampfwagen 38T aus H. The last of the Martyr 3 series was the Panzer Jaeger 38T mid 7.5cm Pak 40-3 aus M, which was more elaborately designed than the previous versions. This version was also the most produced, with just less than 1,000 vehicles being built from 1943 to 1944. On the Panzer 38G chassis, the German developed an anti-aircraft vehicle armed with a single 2cm Flak 38 placed in a rear position firing compartment, known simply as the Flak Panzer 38T. While air targets could be engaged at high angle, firing at ground targets meant that the upper armored parts of the combat compartment had to be lowered. The Panzer 38T chassis was also adopted for the role of self-propelled artillery. There were two versions of this modification armed with the same 15cm SIG-33 heavy infantry gun. First was the Geschützwagen 38 for SIG-33-1. He had a very basic design, with a turret and most of the upper superstructure removed and replaced with a forward-mounted gun and a new open-top superstructure. The second version was the Geschütz Wagen 38 for SIG 33-2 aus K. This vehicle received more serious modifications by placing the gun in a rear position fighting compartment while the engine was moved to the center. Based on it, the Germans developed a simple ammunition supply vehicle, Munitions Panzer 38T aus K that had its gun removed and replaced with a simple metal plate. Despite their attempts, the Germans never really made a successful tank-based reconnaissance vehicle. To somewhat resolve these issues, a modified Panzer 38T chassis was to be reused for such a project. The Aufklärung Panzerwagen 38 was constructed using a slightly modified superstructure and a 2cm armed turret taken from German armored cars. Only some 70 vehicles were built. 
two more vehicles were built armed with 7.5cm guns. In the later stages of the war, the German production of tanks was struggling against the ever-increasing losses and superiority of Allied armored numbers. One solution was a relatively cheap but well-designed anti-tank vehicle. In late 1943, BMM proceeded to design and build a light and relatively cheap tank destroyer vehicle based on some components from the Panzer 38T. The result of this work would be the Yacht Panzer 38T tank destroyer. It was armed with a 7.5cm Pac-39 and was fully enclosed and protected with oil angle 60mm thick front armor. While not a perfect design, it would prove to be an effective anti-tank killer and during the war, around 2,827 such vehicles were built by BMM and Skoda. Based on the Yacht Panzer 38T, a so-called Star Sub version was developed using a rigid gun mount. But the whole project development was slow and only 14 vehicles were built by 1945. For the German Ardennes offensive in late 1944, some 20 Yacht Panzer 38T were modified as flamethrowing vehicles. The gun was simply removed, replaced with a flamethrower and a fake wooden mock-up for the gun. For the need to recover damaged Jagdpanzer 38T, a Bergepanzer 38T was developed using a modified chassis. The gun and the upper top of the superstructure were removed, and additional equipment such as a pivoting spade, crane, and others were added to it. By the time production stopped in April 1945, some 181 such vehicles had been built. A self-propelled artillery version based on the Birkepanzer 38T armed with a 15cm SIG-33 was developed at the war's end. While it is often noted that around 30 or so vehicles were built, in reality it is not clear if this is true. There are only a few existing photographs showing what appears to be a prototype vehicle. Some Birkepanzer 38T were armed with various anti-aircraft guns such as a 2cm Flak 38 or what appears to be a 3cm Flak 103 38. The effectiveness of these vehicles would be dubious at best due to limited interior space. During 1942, BMM produced a small quantity of the Panzer 38T Neuer Art. It was intended to replace the Panzer 38T and to be used as a reconnaissance tank. This project was not accepted and it did not enter production. Amphibious equipment for the Panzer 38T was tested by the Germans during the war. Like most German amphibious projects, it would be abandoned after the cancellation of Operation Sea Lion. During early March 1942, Adolf Hitler gave instruction that a Panzer 38T chassis was to be modified and equipped with a newly developed 7.5cm Sturmkanone. This was a version of the German 7.5cm Pack gun modified to be used on Sturmgeschütz vehicle. BMM was responsible for building such a vehicle known as 7.5cm Stuck auf Panzer 38T. One prototype was built and tested, but no production orders were given for it. The Panzer 38T chassis was to be used for a series of so-called Waffentragers, or gun carriers. These were mostly lightly armored, cheap and armed with various weapons, ranging from anti-tank and artillery guns to mortars. This only reached the early development phase with few vehicles being built. The 8-wheel armored car concept was tested by the Germans back in the late 1920s. One such vehicle was developed by Daimler-Benz, the Mannschaft Transportwagen 1 which was tested at the end of the 1930s. While its performance was deemed satisfactory, due to a lack of funds, it was not adopted for service, but the experience gained would prove to be vital for later designs. Work on 8-wheel armored car was resurrected in 1934. This would lead to the development of the 8-wheel SD KFZ 231 armored car series. Thanks to their 8-wheel drive, this armored car had an excellent all-round driving performance. Armor was light but angled, providing additional protection. While the armament was the same as on the previous version, consisting of a 2cm cannon and a machine gun, the SDKFZ-232 was a long-distance radio variant with a large frame antenna placed on top of it. In the later stages of the war, the 2cm cannon armaments proved to be too weak against enemy armor, so a modified version of the SDKFZ-231 and 232 was introduced at the end of 1942. This was armed with a short 7.5cm L24 gun placed in a fixed position in an open top compartment. The SDKFZ-263 was another radio vehicle for the use of the Panzer units. It had an enlarged superstructure and a machine gun for self-defense. While the SDKFZ-231 series was considered successful, there was still room for improvement. Work on the new improved model was initiated during 1940 with the aim of, among other things, increasing the operational range mobility and armor. Another change was in the whole vehicle construction, as a metal frame was first built on which the remaining components would be attached during the production. 
The first vehicle of this new series was the SJ Kyle Z234-1, which had an open top turret armed with a 2cm cannon and a machine gun. The SJ Kyle Z234-2 had a fully enclosed turret armed with a 5cm gun. The 234-3 was armed with a 7.5cm L24 gun in an open top compartment, while the 234-4 was armed with a much longer 7.5cm Pac-40 anti-tank gun. Some 88 vehicles of the first and 89 of the later would be built. This concludes Tank Encyclopedia's video on the German light tanks of the Second World War Part 2. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to check our website and our Patreon. And until next time, keep us in your sights.